Well, hi, and thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Hey, it's April 4th. It's been about five, six days, I think, since I've been in here last. Seems like forever, actually, because I'm normally in my shop every day working on this kind of stuff. Um, hey, I, I was in my shop, actually, and I, I added this amplifier into my shop equipment arrangement. So, yeah, no video, but I did do a little bit of work in here. Now, what's up with this radio? So the next step with this radio is to change out some of the uh, um, capacitors that are underneath it. So let's just get in there and get a look at it. I don't think this is going to be an easy task. Let's see. So what I want to change out, I think, are three, three capacitors. One here one just like this big box kind of hidden in deeper and for some reason I think there's another one in here somewhere so that's the challenge the challenge is to get these out now I think I'm going to want to flip this radio right upside down here to work on it I don't think I want to work on it on this angle here so I'm just looking at the top you know what I can have this sit on this this and this and it'll work out just fine as I pull this little cap out of the way here. Let's try that. big surprise for me today was uh, not really a surprise snow on the ground again April 4th snow on the ground who ordered that okay, let's just make sure everything's stable here so I don't get any surprises there we go now we can get a good look at these I think they have a, a grommet this must have been the way you hung them in your store or something. Why, why would they have a, a tab with a hole in it like that? This bottom one, it looks larger. Now, you know what? There's a third thing under here. Come back down. Now I can see it. There's a metal can under here. Almost certainly this is either the original capacitor, these ones being replacements, the whole thing is original. That's quite possible too. Or, uh, or who knows? Boy. So, the thing about this radio is, I don't want to be. Wiggling all the wires and bending all the wires in here because that's just going to lead to a, a disaster. These are all. That's not bad. That's pretty good, actually. Ah, some of these are pretty good. That's as stiff as it can be. These are solid as can be in here, too. Look at that. That's just going to go nowhere. So I think I can extract this out. Where are the wires for this? They are probably some of the stiff wires in here. Man. So, I've actually really never seen these before in a radio. Wow. What an ugly mess this is. So uh, my thoughts are going towards just leave them all in there, cut the wires off, install new capacitors somewhere, wire them up, just leave these things in there. I don't think that's the best idea. This one looks like I can get this out pretty easy, actually. Let's just pull it out. Let's see what happens. If we okay, so it's, it's fused to the lower one. Wow, they really stuck together shove a screwdriver up in there and kind of pry them, pry them apart. There we go. OK. 
okay so I can see now that these these wires I, I called flexible are actually coming from the capacitor and uh, there's another two more wires in there it's a bare soldered connection right there There's four wires coming out of this, but only two terminals. It's kind of odd. The, these two wires come from what looks like the same terminal here. They look like it anyway. Maybe they don't. Maybe that's not a terminal. They come and they go together to this point, which is a uh, it's a grounding terminal, grounded chassis terminal here. I'm going to have to take a closer look at this. And before I pull this out, I kind of want to know as much as I can about it. Let's take a look at with the close-up camera. Uh, let me just refocus that camera a little bit first. Get in a little close. Here we go. What have you got to show us? Oh, another thing I need here. There, you can just study the jungle there. I need to turn on my own big screen TV here so why don't we start by reading this thing the super ferret <laughs> hey this must be one of the first super computer super uh, capacitors I was gonna say supercomputer 12 and 12 okay so there should be two positive leads coming out of this thing I would say 200 volt Continental Carbon of Canada. The Continental Carbon of Canada Capacitor Division. Ah, uh, that looks like a U.S. patent. I guess they wanted this to really stand out. And it does. The coloring really does make it stand out from the radio. Okay, so we got up at the top here. So here's the two leads that I said were coming from one terminal. It's because of this little, the look of it here. Let me poke, pick at it. I'm sure my mother used to say to me, Jim, don't pick at that. It's just a bunch of wax, so it's nothing. Wax or other gook. So these wires probably don't reach a terminal, but in fact go down inside the capacitor. And when you, when the uh, repairman or uh, the company installing these in their manufacturing uh, bought these, they came with the lead wires coming out. So it's just possible that uh, these are both positives because you would kind of wonder why there would be two negatives these could both be oh wait positives no they're going to the chassis it can't be why why two negatives well maybe you want to use one capacitor in the power supply and the other one even though they're in the same box maybe you want to use it as a bypass somewhere okay so what about the other wires now, the other wires really kind of buried down in there. Oh look, you can see the wire goes through a slot in the cardboard. Quite clear, there's no there's no terminal on the top of this, of course. Looks like there's two slots in fact. That would kind of make sense. A slot for each of the two twelve capacitors. Now where where do they go? So one one wire is kinda of easy to trace. It just it just comes up here they left the excess in it and it's soldered to a wow a floating solder connection ay 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 and then it's on these two resistors here that are clunking heads uh, wow would they really put a big positive connection just like this might be a B-plus connection just floating out here? That's very unusual. Of course, this is a repair scenario. Um, somebody did this, it, potentially, uh, you know, 
my story could be these capacitors were shoved in here by a repair guy way back in the late 30s even and uh, in doing so he made this floating connection because it's very unlikely you would do this in a in a manufacturing environment because it's just too unreliable you're going to make thousands of radios they're going to have stuff like this in it you're going to have all kinds of trouble in your manufacturing of them so now the other wire where's the other wire go wow it's really it's coming a little easier looking with my eyes here um, let me wiggle this Casting shadows on everything too. Ah, uh, let me change the focus just a bit. It's a little bit too, too close. Oh, let's try that. So it's coming down out of here. No, it's still too close. Thought I fixed that. Okay, let's try that. That's a little better. Coming down out of there, running along, probably into this big bundle here. It's also all floating, but there's so many wires hooked up to it. A lot of red wires. Those red wires usually indicate high voltage. Like it's going into these coils. These are probably IF coils. Probably the high voltage are going through the coil to get to the plate of the tube. And so this is clearly this capacitor would be part of the power supply. And I pull the capacitor out. I think the location of the wires will be revealed without question. That's what I think. Or am I just going to end up in some kind of horrible mess? And then the one below is even bigger. I see it down there. Ooper. Ooper. A super and an ooper. Well, let's take out the super. So I'm going to cut these wires here. I'll leave them hanging a bit mainly because you're not here to remind me where this thing came from. i got to do this on my own. Okay, well it's quite clear now. This wire clearly is going to this bundle. I'm going to leave a, a bunch there too. The other wire though is not going where I thought it was. It's going up this way somewhere. So let's bring on the close-up camera again. Bring on the close-up. So I get a grip on that wire and wiggle it and you'll see where it's going. Try and wiggle it. There we are. Okay, I'll hold the camera still here. That's what's wiggling. So you can see that's got the uh, friction tape on it. By the way, friction tape has turned out to be a really excellent tape to use in these things. Uh, what we call friction tape anyway today. Um, because look, this, this stuff just goes solid and stays put. And when you use the modern modern kind of electrical tape, you know, this stuff here. Uh, this stuff just is gooey and runny and uh, a horrible mess after so many years. Okay, so I'm going to go in and cut that wire. I'm going to leave the splice in there. Hope I got the right one here. Well, I cut it. This means this guy should just pull out now. like some kind of octopus lead in there. Okay, let's take a closer look at what we got. What'd we get? Tell them what they want, Jim. Let's see. 
DC electrolytic condenser 200 volts not very high hey what's this they've got paper wrapped around it and there's something written underneath it blue green yellow uh, yeah <laughs> uh, blue green yellow okay if you say so so for some reason they've covered this the original print has been covered maybe the marketing department came in and said look we can't sell these brown ugly things we want to make them look like bees and then they'll sell idea. That's for the wires. So let's see what it says up here. Aha! Uh, so you can see they do all come out in little slots. I can kind of see that. And there really is two negatives unnecessarily in the application this was put to. And what's that stuff coming out of there? That looks like a well, who knows? It could be dripped onto it. It could be coming out of it. Who knows? Hey, we ought to test this guy. That's an interesting idea. Let's see if we can get the other one out, and then we can put the two of them to a test. Uh, okay. Continue with the close-up here. Oh, 475. Much higher voltage. The super ferret. Hey Bill, you're using those super ferret capacitors? No, tell me about them. Oh, they're nice. They come with wires. They got a little hole you can hang them on your pegboard where all your customers can see them. And they look beautiful. Look, this fantastic yellow beehive sort of deal. Well, I don't see anything spectacular. Let's see if we can move it. Yep. Can hold the camera still here. Okay, so now the wires on this one. So one of them I can see right away. Sorry for the shaky camera stuff. One is this one right here, coming up, coming around, and going. Once again, into another coil of some sort. What I imagine is a coil. Okay, so that, that's probably one positive. Probably the negatives always come out of the same side. That would be over here. Okay, wait a minute. I think there's only one. Oh no. What's going on there? Yeah, there's only one. says negative. Now, let's just see if that doesn't go to the same spot the others went to. Negative. That'd be the, the, the chassis. Where is it in there? Negative. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. Okay, I'm going to go back to the wider shot here. Oh my gosh, you know it's moving. That metal one underneath is moving. Okay, so I gotta I gotta pry these apart again. like the last time. It's like it's glued right on there. Yeah. yeah. This is a bit of a bigger deal. What's going on with this bottom box now? The bottom metal box. Is that abandoned in place? 
I got more wires coming out of it. Okay, so this this floating connection has this wire. It's going down into the metal box, almost certainly the metal capacitor. It's still in the circuit, and there appears to be a second wire coming out of it. This one here going going over to the ground. Same same where these went. Now there's another one here that's suspicious too. That coming all coming from the same point here. And that this one does go down into the metal box. And this one almost certainly the positive coming out of it and it looks like that's it two wires Ooh. I think we want to short this out by accident here okay well wow, okay I'm gonna be removing three things here all with wires snaking around I'm guaranteed to, to forget what I'm doing so, I'm going to make some diagrams and notes here so I don't forget. I'll stop the video while I'm doing that. Okay, so once again, I demonstrate my uh, drafting skills. <laughs> but you know, the thing about a diagram like this is if you're the guy who made it, it's a little like the top of your desk. If you're the guy who keeps putting papers here, there, and everywhere in your desk and whatnot, you know where they are. So I know how to read that. Famous last words. So there's a good chance we can just pull these guys out of here now. I think I cut all the wires. There's interfering wires here. So I'm pull out this top thing. Whoa. How am I going to do that? There we go. Sounds like I'm ripping the paper, but who cares? Okay, that feels loose. Come on out. Oh, I didn't cut all the wires. So this wire must have come with this box. It's it's a little more flexible than some of the others. Maybe that's a a sign of something. I cut it with lots of length. Yeah, I hope that was the right thing. There we go. Still not happy about coming out. Okay, another wire I didn't cut. Special about that. Uh, let's see if we get this metal one to come out of here. Why? Why? Uh, why would somebody not change this out? So you know, I think this is all original. It is all original because if it wasn't, then you would change out the original thing in favor of the new stuff. And I gotta guess this this piece here is original. I don't know why I got it in my head. I cut all these wires. I didn't cut this one here. Here we go. There we are. Surge proof type. 8 millifarads. 450 volts. Wow, we were really interesting to put these guys to the test, which I think I'm going to do right away. Let's find out what we just took out. Look at that huge chasm I've left in here. Holy smokes, you can park a boat in there. Fantastic. Not so fantastic. On the fingers. Okay, I gotta, I gotta clean up my fingers here. I can't continue with this goo on them. 
Okay, let's give these guys a test. Uh, this is my Heathkit capacitor checker. Uh, it's really made for capacitors back when radios were like the one I'm fixing now. In that the way it tests them is not the same as uh, a, a, a modern a tester might do it. This, this being a, a modern tester. It's looking for different things from what was important way back when. So that's why I like using the older guy. It's a simple test. First test we're going to put uh, voltage on this. And if any electricity leaks through it, there shouldn't be, but it, some will probably leak through it because it's so old. And that leaking will cause something to happen here on the magic eye, which we'll see in a moment. So this is now set to 25 volts, nothing connected. Here's what the eye does. It actually flashes closed for a moment, believe it or not, while a charge enters these wires. Here, let me just put a little. Can anybody tell if that's slightly slower? <laughs> I don't think so. There's capacitance in these leads too, but it's very, very small compared to what we're testing. So we'll hook this up. Negative on the negative. Positive on the positive. Not really wire there. I think that's strength. I think I just yeah. I was clipping it on metal and clipping it on some string. Same thing over here. Yeah. Pastor's trying to trick me. There we go. Okay. 25 volts. Uh, what we would expect to see here is the eye close and pop open very quickly, very similar to what we saw with nothing connected. Well, doesn't that tell the story? 25 volts and this thing is leaking like a sieve. So no use doing any other test to it. So this is a bad, bad actor. Bad actor. That's very bad. That ranks is hugely bad for crying out loud. There's a hole in it right there. Now, let's take a look at that. No, you know what? I'm the one. Let's not bother. I'm the one. Who, oh no! I didn't put that hole in there. I put. I, I put this hole in here. Let's take a look at this. Maybe I did. I think I probably did. Yeah. Let's not bother. One way or another, there's a hole inside this. And the fact is, there's a hole here. This doesn't look sealed particularly well here. You know, it's a nice metal box, but maybe it was perfectly sealed in, in its original its original form, but sure isn't here. Okay, so that guy's a dud. He had to go. Okay, everybody get your money out on this. Which one's negative? This one here. Because it says. Okay. Go on there. Let's see if this is just as bad as the last one. So super, super bad. Just as bad as the other one. That's a piece of junk. Okay, anybody's gonna bet anything other than this one being bad, then I'd like to play poker with you. Let's see. That's a two-parter. This right? Yep. Negative there. Two parter. There we go. Part number one. This is a total and utter piece of crap. <gasps> you know why? Hold on. Back up. Everybody back up. Okay. Gotta start over. So there's a control here that needs to be set this way when you're doing electrolytic capacitors. So every electrolytic capacitor will fail if you don't have that switch the right way. So. Okay, I blew it. Let's start over. Here we go. Start with this one. How bad is it really? Okay, so that's partially opening. That's not very good. It really should open up wide. That's 25 volts also. So if we go up another step, 150 volts. Watch your hand here, Jim. 150 volts. Okay, now we'll go on the other side. So. <laughs> Still testing bad. Okay, here we go. 
uh, 25 volts. Same, and 150 I'm sure it'll just be the same deal. Look at that. So that's a bad capacitor. Bad boy, bad. Okay, and this one here. I'm sure we're going to get the same kind of response. So what we'll do is we'll test a brand new electrolytic using the wrong setting. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how much leak there is in a brand new one. Okay. There we are. 25 volts. You know, 25 volts is not demanding much of these things. Well, they're not shorted. You notice I'm making no attempt to measure their capacitance. When they leak this badly, you really can't measure it accurately. 25, 25 on the metal guy. So they're all, they're all, what, what they're showing is, is they're not shorted, but they're very leaky. And probably their effective capacitance is poor, very poor. To, so, I mean, replacing these is the order of the day. Let me get, the, let me get one now. Brand spanking new one. first one I grabbed was a bit of a low voltage one, so I wanted to get one. This is a high voltage one, 450 volts, 50 microfarads. This is not uh, new NOS, this is new. This is a new modern capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. So with the machine set to electrolytic, 25 volts, here's what we get. It takes time for the charge to flow into it and for the eye to open up all the way. And that's the charge reversing out of it. So that was 150. That was 25. This is 150. It'll open all the way. And then we'll take it up. 350. Ready? Everybody ready? Hands away, hands free, hands aside. With the higher voltage is pushing more charge, it takes longer for the more charge to get in, to get in there. But it will open all the way. There we are. And we'll let the charge bleed off when the when I release this control. It uh puts a short on the capacitor. Okay, so now we're going to test this 25 volts, but I've switched it, so really the machine is set for testing a regular, a regular type capacitor. Let's see what it shows. So I see a brand new one tests bad in this setting, because all these electrolytics have a little bit of a leak in them. So no need to go any higher voltage, so let that be the lesson. Jim, always check check that switch. Even if I'd done it wrong, <laughs> I would have concluded these as I was, these capacitors were bad. That's the right conclusion. Just reached the wrong way. <laughs> Hold on there. Uh, so there we are. That's the situation with those capacitors. They are bad, bad guys. Now we got to get back to how are we going to put the new ones in? What are we going to put in there? How's that all going to work? Well, that's a good question here. Let's see what we can figure out. We have tons of space. Space, not a problem. We've got uh, one, two, three. We've got four, basically four different capacitors here. Uh, going different places and different values. We've got two 12s, an 8, and what was this guy? Is also an eight. So we got two eights, two eights, and two twelves. And those are relatively small size filter capacitors for radios. Uh, typically, they're much larger. But you know, back in the day, much larger meant much larger. 
So this is the big, big as they could go, practically in a radio like this. And it could mean that somewhere in here is a uh, well. Doesn't mean doesn't mean it could mean definitely this radio in order to have a uh, smoothed out B plus power supply working properly uh, could not rely just on capacitors. Uh, you know, with a resistor and a Pi network uh, instead of the resistor, they got to have an inductor. And that inductor, of course, is the field coil up in this, up in here. It all, see, it's all adding up. Back, you know, at some point uh, coming forward in time, like the late 30s or something, the field coil speakers became very unpopular. These are expensive. A lot of copper up here, it's expensive. And the capacitors got better while not getting physically bigger, you know, bigger values. So in the end, you could switch away from a inductor-based filter pi network with small capacitors into a pi network with a resistor and big capacitors. That's kind of the story, as I understand it, anyway. So now, what about all? What do we see? Now we can see more. Hey, let's go. Let's let's go investigating in there and see exactly what we can see. Turn this guy off. Here we go. So I'm just basically looking to see what can be seen in here. It's a tube socket there. Got my focus up too too close. Let me back it off here a little bit. There. So all these resistors have this kind of sleeve on them. And I, I believe the reason for that, we're going to take a look at a bunch of these. Th th this radio is full of this dog bone style resistor. Um, so I'm going to take a look at a bunch of them. Because my question would be, are these, are these resistors inherently unreliable or are they exactly the opposite? You should really kind of leave these guys alone. So I got a box of them. We'll, we'll take a look at it. I'll gook on this one. That's come from those capacitors, I'm pretty sure. Let's go. Let's go dive in right in here. Capacitor appears to be. Uh, Okay, so those vertical screws there, uh, vertical screws, the screw into which I am placing the screwdriver, these are the adjustment screws. Just under that red wire, if I can get down there, you can see the capacitor plates in there. Pull this up a little bit. Yeah, so, so there's the capacitors bit of a different angle from what you usually find in these things. That's good. They're all completely accessible from above here as they would have to be. Glad I found those. There's a wax capacitor here. I gotta assume everything in these sleeves. Oh no, this is not this is not a resistor. This is another is it? Can't be sure if that's a resistor or some weird capacitor. Ugly, for sure. Another resistor. So the resistors appear to they have these sleeves slid over them. They're loose. Nothing loose about this. So may, maybe this is a capacitor. Does it say something on it? It has the look. He's got the look. Sister here. And the one tucked down there, the 
they've all got these sleeves on it because the carbon, like this one, doesn't have a sleeve. This this surface could be conductive. Uh, maybe these these two do not have sleeves. Maybe they're treated differently and they're somehow coated or something. And why why would they sleeve this, like not sleeve this one, but put a sleeve on this one? And this 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 is a high voltage point right here. I'm pretty sure. Look, this resistor is hooked right up to it. This is right here, you know, for someone to stick their tongue on if they're so inclined. Here's another one of these, two of them actually. Here's a wrapped. Yeah, this is. I think this is a capacitor. Wow. Where was it made? It's ugly as can be. And likewise, look at this thing. Again, here's the resistor with the loose sleeve on it. Oh, it's not so loose, but it's just stuck. But you can look down in it. You can't look down in these ones. So the, these are probably real sick puppies, too. Now, this radio worked a bit, didn't it? It's amazing, eh? Now, what's buried way down in there? Here's another one of these ugly, sinful things. Ugh. I don't, I don't relish the thought of replacing all those. What do we got here? We got one, two, three, four. This one's easy. Five. What about over here? Five, six. Here's another one. Six. Well, this one you can kind of see in the end much better. Look, look how it's. Look, look at this resistor it's jammed up against the capacitor and potentially the lead, and also jammed against the chassis down here. I think that's a potential short circuit there. I, I really do. I really, really do. So I, I'm pretty sure, and, and then this thing here is a capacitor also. Pretty sure of that. You can actually see that this lead goes down under this center brownish piece and the other side the lead comes over the top of the brownish piece so I believe we're looking at the actual plates of the capacitor and between it is the dielectric material now, this is right in the open so you know it could be it could be moisturized something terrible in there corroded and everything what, what's hidden way up in here darkness that's what's hidden up there darkness where we're looking, right at the end here. There's some furry, furry beast in there. What is that? Furry beast. That looks like another capacitor down in there. Ugh. No, it's a resistor with a sleeve on it. It looks all cracked and gnarly. Trying to keep it in the center of the screen here for you, but I think that's a resistor there. There's a black thing right there. That's going to be another sleeved resistor right in the center of the screen. That's how they sleeve some wires with those uh, loose fitting guys here. <laughs> a schmazzle. It's a schmazzle. Is there something I haven't looked at in here? What haven't I looked at? Yep, there is. Or did I? Look at this one down here. It's another one of these sort of loosely wrapped capacitor like things. Ooh, what's that square thing down there? No, that's just a round sleeve on another dog bone resistor. I'll take a look at this control here. This is the... Uh, this has to be the volume. It's the only... Like, there's three controls. So, wait a minute. This would be volume. The one that says loud and soft on it. 
A, B, C, D. Okay, so this, this must be tone. Could figure that out. Yeah, see, there's a capacitor connected right to it here. That's probably the tone capacitor. And this is the tone control. Bradley, I've seen that name before. Type AS, I think is what it says. Okay, but we know what it is. It's a tone control. It sounds like it's wire wound. You can kind of picture the slider bumping over uh, wires. It has a feel, it feels that way too in the knob. See? <laughs> See how it feels? Uh, okay, so this guy's definitely the volume control, and so he's quite a different style, eh? Not square. And the feel is totally different. There's no... See, I'm turning it? There's no bumpy sound. Three terminals. This, so this, this capacitor here, which I, this thing I assume is a capacitor, you can barely see it in there, is probably the capacitor conveying the audio off this terminal, the center terminal, on into the radio. Now this guy has no capacitance, there'd be no signal getting through the radio. Let me get quiet. Okay, any other surprises way down there? Just a resistor. So, big question about those resistors. There's so many of them in this radio. Do I need to worry about them are they reliable that, that dog bone style are they reliable or are they crap I personally don't have an opinion I, I don't have enough experience uh, either directly in working with them in radios for the most part I leave them alone oh I'll change that my experience is for the most part you can leave them alone is that valid? Geez, I don't know. I've never done any real objective study of this, so that's what we're going to switch to now. An objective study of a bunch of resistors. Where are they? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Here they are. Here they are. I have a few. I have a few. different styles like this one has a metal big metal ends on it okay, so this is more typical my understanding of these is this is a carbon shaft and they cut it to a certain length to get a certain amount of resistance for a certain diameter and a certain type of carbon in here I guess carbon carbon rod and then they connect these wires pretty much by wrapping them around the ends of the carbon and just hoping that's the connection that's my understanding of how these are made I think that's correct so this is more typical of what's in that radio so this has been coated heavily with something yellow by the way the way you would read these this is a good one to test too body and dot body and dot so body would be yellow that's four zero two zeros so it's 4k so I think this is 4k let's give it a test right away I'm going to test a bunch of these. Just find out how 
have a now that it's stood up. I'm going to use the uh, leads here with clips on them. For obvious reasons. 4K. Is that what I said? 4K? I think I said 4K. Here we go. Oops. Hey, it was heading right for 4 there. Yeah, so that, that, that's 4K. I mean, how accurate could these have even been the day they were made? I'm going to wiggle the leads here a bit. So I'm really concerned about these, these connections over time giving out. That's my guess. This is how these things get into trouble. That's rock solid. Okay, so if we base everything on this one resistor, these resistors are fantastic. Here's another one. It says right on it, 9,000. It's got some kind of coating on the top. Nine thousand. What do you say? Eight point eight. Okay, so we base everything on those two. These resistors should be well respected. Now this one's got damage right here and damage right under here. It looks like almost like this is worked loose. It doesn't feel loose. I don't think it's loose. Okay, so what's this one? Body end dot brown orange orange. So one, three, but body end dot. One, three, thirteen K. comes out at 14. You know, what do you expect? 13, 14? So if we base it, if we base an opinion on what's happening here in my shop, these resistors are highly reliable. Oh, what's this one going to be? Yeah, reliable except you can't tell what the value is. Well, you know, body and dot. It could be orange, orange, orange. Or yellow, yellow, yellow. It's probably part of the problem with doing these this way. 8K. Rock solid. Here's one I can read. Okay, so body and dot. Uh oh, gray, gray. What's gray? Gray is eight. Eighty-eight uh, k. Eight k. I'm not sure. Gray is eight. Okay, nine. Well, maybe maybe gray is nine. I don't know. I'm not going to bother checking. Once again, really good shape. Pick one that doesn't look to be in great shape. That guy has got a number on it. Somebody has penciled in 60K. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 60K. I hope I'm not blocking the screen with my hands here. Here we go. 60K. Look at that. 60K. Rock solid. Ooh. Yeah, sometimes I'm grabbing both. Mostly, I'm becoming part of the circuit here, so again, super duper reliable. Here's one, it's got the amount written on it, I think. Uh, uh, one, somebody's penciled in 100, 100. So this one is brown, black, and then where's the dot? Maybe the dot is brown, so that would be brown, black. It's 10 with a uh, one more zero, 100, right, where it matches what's written on it. 100, hey, eh? let's see. Honestly, it looks like it said 100K. Body and dot. So to be uh, 100K, I think the dot would have to be uh, yellow, I think. 
Oh God. Perfectly reliable for what it is. Okay, here's one. Um, so, uh, body end dot. What do you say that is? White, white, orange. What the heck is that? Let's measure it first. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can even guess that. Hundred K. So the K part is the orange dot. How do you get a hundred out of that? You put it on your own meter and measure it. That's how you get a hundred. Rock solid. This one looks to be in rougher shape. Looks like the wire's almost separated here at the end. smaller carbon rod. 23. Super reliable. Now, what about conductivity in the actual center part? See, this looks almost like a bare, like a bare carbon rod here with wires on it. First check across. Okay, so it likes to say it's 12. I don't know where 12 comes from. What about this? I should see zero right in there. It's got it written on it again. So since somebody's gone, I guess this box, I think I got this at a uh, flea market in a box. Looks like somebody's gone through and measured these and written the amounts on it. I never knew that. 10,250. 10,250 is what he wrote. Let's see if it's still 10,250. Well, it's not 10,250 on my meter. Now, what would make what would make this different today for my reading than the fellow's reading? My reading's higher too. Um, I don't know, would these things drift high? The carbon here may not be as stable as you might think. This is probably carbon powder in some kind of binder. It's probably like 85% uh, carbon powder and then 15% binder, or something like that. It's been squeezed into this and the hope is they can make it consistently. That's my thinking. I mean, you can't just take carbon, you know, out of your fireplace and somehow pile it together and you get a rod like that. you got to have some other binder holding it together. So maybe over time there are actual mechanical, chemical changes in the material here. And it, I, can't, I can't see how the resistance would go down. I think it would have to go up. Look at this big honker here. The guy's got 8,000 written on it. Okay. So I guess these these caps were a way to get away from the wire wrap technique. So again, we're not getting the what somebody wrote on it. We're getting a much higher reading, exact, just about exactly 10. So a possibility here, a good possibility, is the 8,000 was not correct. Whoever wrote that, here's one that this looks kind of rough, rough. It looks like some of the paint has come off here. Maybe we can do the conductivity test with it. So this guy, oh, he's, he's way in there. 90K. Pretty, oh, oh, I got something. Oh, that's me. Fingers, and I'm touching this. Let's see, is this, is this conductive? Sure, it was going to go. Come on. Let's try again. Really? Ah, not for sure that would show a, a reading.
Here's a weirdy. Look at this guy. So what's happened here is somebody's taken the resistor. Wow, this tells you something about how strong these are. Somebody's taken a resistor and put it on the grinding wheel. Ground down a lot of the carbon. Well, this is a good one for conductivity. Can you believe it? And they, this is going to withstand that and still be a reliable resistor after having that done to it? I mean, the answer must be yes. Okay, so this guy's resistance is uh, 1.7K. How stable is it? Seems okay. Now, will it conduct in the middle? I can't believe it. Really? Where, if any of them are going to be conductive, it would be this. Why, yeah. Uh, why, 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 why no go? I'm surprised. Okay, now we're getting a little bit. So it's a 1700 when you measure between the leads, but trying to just jump in the middle, you get a great big resistance all over the place. Hmm. There's one that caught my eye. Look at that guy. Body end dot. Brown, black, white. So brown, one, zero, what's white? White, white is nine. Point two mega ohms. Oh, very, very stable. These are all really, really stable resistors. Am I boring everybody to heck here? This one looks to be in terrible shape. Says twenty five thousand on it. Twenty five thousand. Get any twenty five out of that. Okay, I got my fingers across it here. Got a hundred now, so he, this one may be a bad one. I think this one might be a bad one here. Yeah, so it's getting... Well, it could just be the clip lead connections. Look how this has been soldered on here. You didn't do a very good job of that, actually. Come to think of it, if you're going to try to solder a lead onto here, maybe you're going to wreck the connection down inside. Well. I think the bottom line is these are really quite reliable resistors. 1.3K written rate on it. This might be a wire wound one. This, this this might be something quite different. Might also be a, a junker. 200K scale shows open. 1.3K. It's quite easy to see it. Open circuit. Don't throw it back in the box. Sure. It's just an old one of a more more classic style. This could still have the carbon rod inside. Or uh, all these carbon resistors basically are the same kind of thing. It says 500 right there. 500, eh? Yeah, 676. I think 
the guy's meter was off, whoever did all of these. Here's another one. This has got written 10,000 on it. And it looks like brown, black, brown. That, that would not be 10,000. 10,000. Here's one, clearly marked, clearly marked, a large one. Body and dot, brown, black, green with a silver. So brown, black, one, zero, one meg, one point one meg. Okay, I wiggle the leads. Beautiful. So look at the pile I've gone through here. I found one that seemed to be a little bit wonky. These these, these have obviously been cut out of radios. These things have service time on them. They've been installed. They've been removed. They've been traveling around in this lid to a uh, some, some kind of uh, greeting card lid here for who knows how long. 24 cards. Been having an, an unfavorable life, yet they are working well. There we go. Don't know what I'll ever do with these, but actually, what I just did with them now is probably the best thing I could ever do with these. Run through a bunch and test them. Check that guy out. Okay. Well, I think what that says to me in terms of this radio and all others with these dog bone resistors is don't jump in there and start changing them all. If it was risk-free, I might think differently, but going in and doing that stuff, risky business. So we're left with the three big capacitors I've taken out, and then a bunch of these horrid-looking things here. They look horrible, but they may not be. So the name of the game here is to put in three new... four, isn't it? Four. Four, four new capacitors up in here hook them all up. That's going to be a fair bit of work actually uh, because the the lines are running all over the radio here and uh, probably play the radio after that and see what happens. We'll go from there. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you on the next video.